Hey everyone, welcome. And today we're going to be talking about audiovisual and we're going to go through the how to of it all. Um, I'd like to just to kind of highlight Chris Bovard. He is our global leadership team AV director. And he ran last year's World AA Day for Los Angeles and did an outstanding job. So now he is in charge of the global leadership for audiovisual, and um, he is your go-to person for anything related to AV. Um, many of you probably have seen the toolkit that he put together for World IA Day. Um, it talks about AV, streaming, recording, and publishing. So I'd like to introduce Chris, and he's just going to kind of walk us through the basic, intermediate, and advanced setups. and. Um, we're just going to kind of help showcase the different setups that you can put together for World AA Day. So welcome, Chris. Thank you so much. All right, great. Uh, thanks, Laura. Um, I'm not going to read everything that's in this document, but I definitely want to uh, offer up some of the highlights and then definitely encourage everybody to go and check it out in more detail. Um, on the first page, what we're really trying to do here is make sure we communicate what the goals were. And um, for us, what we thought about was that the goals were to first create a great experience for the people that were going to be live at the event and make sure that they could see and hear um, all of the content um, and the materials that were being presented. But one of the other big time goals is to make sure that we can capture what's being presented for the purpose of live streaming and also for the purpose of archiving. One of the really cool things about um, World IA Day is the ability to use the AV system to capture um, and archive for future um, people that want to go back and, and watch these things. Um, so we hope to put together some AV systems and use the technology that we have um, to uh, create great records um, for archiving. Right. I think uh, that, so, if you don't mind, I'll just interject that, yeah, probably the most sure. important thing that we can do here is capture this amazing content from all of these speakers all over the world. So if we don't have an, a good AV setup, then we won't be able to capture it. And AV can be a little intimidating and complicated. So that's why we have these different levels of basic all the way to advanced. And of course, those are directly related to the cost as well. Right. And I definitely want to comment that these are uh, samples. Um, I think they're great uh, sort of basic, intermediate, advanced um, examples. But, um, you know, your systems out there may have deviations. And it's possible that what you end up with somewhat of a blend between the basic and the intermediate. So it's not to say that you have to follow these exactly. But these are just guidelines, good places to start, especially if you don't have any AV experts uh, on site with you helping. Um, so we can go through these. Laura, are you ready for me to walk through these uh, system drawings? Yeah, that'd be great. Can you see the basic one on your screen? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so this one I think is sort of the bare bones minimum of what we should be shooting for for capture. Um, what this one does, we'll use the microphone as part of the presenter's laptop and uh, we'll uh, capture the and encode the uh, slides. So the way that this presentation will look as it gets streamed out and recorded is a full screen presentation of whatever's on the presenter's laptop along with the audio that's being captured using the uh, microphone as part of the presenter's laptop. Um, so the way this is wired is the presenter's laptop goes through um, either an analog or digital video cable to the large display. It's probably a big projector in, a, in a, um, an auditorium someplace. Um, and then the second computer that's on there is um, doing the encoding. So this has some free software that comes from Ustream. It will um, grab the materials from the presenter's laptop and, and push them out to Ustream. Now what Ustream is going to do is allow um, people who want to watch it live to see it via the internet as well as capture the, 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 all of the content and record it so that we can download it after the fact and, and archive it like we said earlier. Um, so this is a super basic setup. It just requires two laptops. Um, one of them is going to be the presenter's laptop, the other the encoding laptop there, with the presenter's laptop being also presenting uh, the materials live at the event. Um, the note that I have at the bottom there before we move on um, is to make sure that the 
encoding laptop, the one that's connected to Ustream, has a physical hardwired LAN and not using the Wi-Fi. What we found over and over again is that Wi-Fi is incredibly unreliable um, and comes and goes uh, as the space gets busy with everybody on their mobile devices. Um, so it's really important to hardwire the encoding laptop. I would actually encourage you to hardwire the, pres the presenter laptop as well. Depending um, upon the location, you may have to have that be Wi-Fi. Oh, Bruce, the the actually, um, the audio just kind of went in and out a little bit. Are you still there? I am. Okay, can you just um, repeat that? I think you were saying you would encourage everyone to do the hard wire no matter what. That's right, but I understand that based on the presentation space at the podium, there may not be any way to have a hardwired network connection there. Not the end of the world. Make sure the connection on the encoding side um, uh, that's connected to Ustream is hardwired if at all possible. Okay, just so have one question on this one. So. Um, this is actually the basic level, and it's actually a really good way to capture it because you get the slides plus the audio. So if you have, let's say, three presenters, would you encourage them to, when you say presenter laptop, would you encourage them to load everything onto that one laptop? Yes, I would. You definitely can use different laptops, but what that will require is the encoding laptop to have to keep being reset to connect to a different laptop. So that Ustream software that's on that encoding laptop, it's aiming at a different um, computer that has to have special software on it. So it's a little extra work if you keep swapping in and out the presenter's laptops. So yeah, my recommendation is to dedicate one laptop that's going to be used all day for the presenters and just have all their slides put on that one. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move okay, on to so, the intermediate. Yeah. All right, in the intermediate one, this is a build on the basic. So um, you'll notice that there's a couple things that are the same. Uh, the presenter laptop is still uh, physically wired via a um, digital or analog video cable to the large display. And also there's an encoding laptop that's then uh, doing the same as in the basic that is um, grabbing the, the materials, the presenter materials from the presenter laptop and then um, connecting it to the internet for the purpose of Ustream. Where this one gets a little bit better is it also includes a USB camera at the encoder and it also does include a soundboard. So the advantage that this one has over the first is that you can get some video, um, some live video into the um, into the presentation, albeit from a USB camera, you're not going to get great video. It's surely not production quality video, but at least you can see the presenter's face. You can maybe see a little bit about what the presenter's doing. Um, so using USB camera, you get some video. Um, the other thing that this one adds is the soundboard with the microphones. Um, so if you recall from the basic um, system, it was relying upon the microphone um, in the laptop in order to, to record the, the presenter's um, voice. Um, that's not going to give you a great audio experience. Um, you know, lavalier microphones or even handheld microphones running through a soundboard are definitely going to give you um, better audio quality, both in terms of what you're um, broadcasting out through the Ustream and recording, as well as what's happening in the room. You know, this would be the kind of setup you'd have if you have access to uh, a mixing board, an amplifier, a PA system, so that you have sound reinforcement in the space as well. Um, and you're going to need to use microphones for that. So this is leveraging that uh, those additional parts, microphones, soundboards, USB cam, um, to get a little bit more video and um, uh, audio, better audio quality into the recording. And, and as far as the, the microphones, I think what I found from past events is it's kind of nice to have the combo, if you can, to set up the lavalier. So it, in a lavalier is just a little uh, clip that clips to the presenter's clothing in, uh, you know, kind of near their collar um, where they they can just speak naturally and, and have both hands and maybe they have a wireless clicker for the slides. Whereas with a handheld, of course, they have one hand that needs to hold the microphone. Um, so would you encourage right. them to have the combo of both um, available yes, and definitely. then to try to use the lavalier for the presenter? Yep, I definitely would. And I would also recommend where possible get at least one microphone, handheld microphone that's hardwired 
um, because we've definitely seen it. We definitely even saw it in that depending upon the RF space and what's going on with the RF, those microphones, those wireless microphones will cut in and out. And having a hardwired mic just to be able to hit the presenter in the case that the, the RF starts going crazy, always a good plan. But yeah, the lobs are great. Um, I think the presenters feel more comfortable. Um, um, and yeah, having a mix, I think, is a great idea. And having a mix of wired and hardwired, uh, wired and wireless is, is a good plan as well. Yeah, I would, um, because I think there's there's surely some um, personal preference there. I think um, some speakers feel more comfortable having that mic in their hand, um, while others like the freedom of just having it clipped to their shirt, and so they can kind of have more freedom to, to move about and, and you know um, um, advance their slides. Um, so I think having a combination of lavalier mics and handheld mics is a good idea. Um, one thing I would add to that is that it's a good idea to have a combination of wired mics and wireless mics. Um, we even found through our experience at the LA event last year that the RF space, depending upon where your um, venue is, just may have a hard time. Um, it comes and goes. So being able to hand the presenter a wired mic that's wired straight to the soundboard um, if the RF space gets weird is, is always a good plan. Um, so wireless mics are great because you can move around, you can be far from the soundboard. Um, it definitely gives you a lot more freedom, but also having a kind of a backup wired mic is a, is a good idea as well, and I definitely recommend that. And by RF, you mean radio frequency, right? Right, yeah. That's the, that's the, uh, the way that the, um, the little wireless mics communicate back to the receiver box that's going to be near the soundboard. Right. And so one thing that I've done is before the event, I have the speakers meet in a certain area and I make sure they know ahead of time uh, what types of mics we're using. Um, in fact, we often have a rehearsal where they can come in the night before or before the event so they can just get on the stage and get comfortable and they can understand uh, what type of mic they're using. Uh, because then that makes them feel more comfortable. Now, people who are seasoned at speaking uh, maybe don't need that, but um, it's always a nice thing to offer, and I think it's important to make your speakers feel really comfortable. And um, one other point is that the handheld mic is really good if you're doing a Q&A um, so that you can make sure to capture the question on the audio. And um, if for some reason you're not able to do that, it's good for the speaker to rephrase the question to make sure the whole audience heard what, what is being asked. So, you know, depending on your program, just think through those things as you think about what types of microphones that you want to have available. Yep, yep, I agree. Um, I'll make the comment again that the encoder needs to be plugged into the hardwire land. Uh, I, I put that footnote on every one of these drawings. This is a, a good reminder. Okay, fantastic. So we'll go ahead and move on to advanced. Okay, now on the advanced one, this is where you get a production quality camera, um, which is great for capturing the presenter in high definition, as well as being able to seamlessly switch between the presenter and the uh, the content. Um, actually, I think, Laura, you have a, a sample that you wanted to show that will kind of demonstrate that way better than I can describe it. So maybe just show that real quick. That's right. Um, so uh, this is a video uh, from World Day 2013, and it's our good friend Aaron with his presentation on communicating IA. So you can see when I press play just for a couple seconds, that you're going to see him talking, and then it's going to revert over to the slides. But we have to start understanding how we can communicate in a way that resonates with them. Change the terminology. Don't nerd out. Sometimes you have to just make it simple and easy for people. But we feel like we're doing a disservice because we didn't use a bunch of big words. So it's better to just get them to understand and get that buy-in. Come prepared. I love doing this because no one really believes me. So. I have to find a way to get them to. And it's often because, well, you're the designer. You're supposed to come and recommend to do design better. But a lot of times, if you come prepared, having done your research, having found validating factors outside of yourself. Okay, so that just kind of shows you how it toggles between the speaker and the slides. And there's even like a little fade in 
um, right. that's being done there. So this is kind of the high end advanced level. Wouldn't you say so, Chris? Yes. Um, that transition, that crossfade there, um, is done with a, a production video switcher, um, which is shown in this drawing on the bottom left there. Um, that's doing a seamless switch between the camera, which is the first input there, and then the presenter's laptop um, that, that's plugged into the second channel of that encoder. And so what that outboard box is, being, is able to do that the other examples haven't is to take in a camera feed, maybe even multiple camera feeds, if you got that kind of uh, equipment um, and the the presentation laptop, and it's using a, a dedicated switching device to do that, and also to encode it for the purpose of sending it to UStream, which is with that little cloud there at the center. Um, uh, so this is a pretty expensive piece of equipment. It would be one of those things that um, maybe if you're uh, affiliated with a university or another company that has that kind of equipment that they could could loan to you. Um, it's definitely not something that you would likely go out and buy for this event. Um, these products range anywhere from $900 to several thousand dollars, um, and they do a fantastic job, as you saw from that video example, um, um, of uh, doing the switching and also the encoding. Um, in the, the soundboard setup is, is basically the same from the previous example has a mixture of microphones coming into the soundboard and also the audio from the presenter's laptop. Um, the difference here is that in addition for the soundboard going out to the amplifier and speakers, it's also taking a line out which is going into the production switcher um, so that the audio is also being sent um, to Ustream. Um, other than that, the, the uh, setup is the same that the, as the addition of that encoding box that the that hard hardware device um, is, the, is what makes the difference here in, in, in the high quality uh, camera. And that's about it for the advanced one. Yeah, I think that um, it's really nice that you broke it into these three different levels. And of course, like you said, it's going to depend on uh, the availability of the equipment that they have. So if any of you have questions, uh, Chris is definitely your go-to guy. Um, you can reach him at av at worldiaday.org. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out to him. He's more than happy to answer any questions. In fact, I think one city um, asked you about the internet connection, and I think um, I think you, that's why you added the note below about having that hard wire as the backup. So, you know, basically... Right, okay. Yeah, any questions you have, don't hesitate to reach out. Like I said, AV can be a little intimidating, a little complex, uh, depending on what you want to capture, how you want to capture it, and what equipment you have available. So one thing I'd just like to mention is that um, planning is key, that you should plan for problems. Because even no matter how much you plan, I guarantee you're going to get on site and something's going to go wrong. So you just need to plan ahead for that, expect that to happen. And some of the things that you can do is, um, like I think, Chris, you had a sound check. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did uh, a, a sound check and we also had a, um, a, a rehearsal the night before with the, uh, the video set up. Um, and even though that we had three or four AV engineers there, we still had a, a really big heated problem um, that, that caused us the, about an hour or two of chasing down heated problems. So even those of us that, that do this for a living uh, still get stumped. So I definitely, yes, support what you're saying about testing it out and planning for uh, a problem at the last minute. Right, right. And, I, and also on that project management document I shared from L.A., Chris made a fabulous uh, list of cables and equipment and basically was identifying, okay, here's the things that we have and here's the things that we need. So that, I think, um, was extremely helpful. And um, we, can, we can definitely send that link out to everybody again to make sure that they have that list. Um, one thing before we end, Chris, I know that you added on here all the information about Ustream. Did you want to touch on that just yeah. for a sec? 
Uh, yeah, sure. I, I hope it's. Um, I designed it to be uh, a bit step by step um, and not too wordy. Um, so yeah, the goal here was just kind of screen captures of uh, what you need to do. Um, the setup is pretty straightforward. You create an account with some credentials that we've established already. Um, and then uh, here, if you keep scrolling, Laura, this will just kind of, you kind of slow scroll through this as I talk. Um, I just took screen grabs of each of the um, interactions you have to do with the information. We've kind of spelled out the whole thing based on your city. We, we've given you the, the city name and the login, the password. Um, and then once you're in, you basically go and um, look at your dashboard and then you're able to um, create the World IA Day channel as it's showing there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then uh, in a sec here, I think we get to the point where we also do the, uh, the slideshow. So we add some graphics in um, that will basically, maybe one thing that I would describe the way Ustream works is that it has an on-air mode and an off-air mode. So while it's receiving content from your encoder, and that means any of the three systems that we discussed, they all have an encoder at their core that's sending information to Ustream. If Ustream is getting information from your encoder, that's considered online, or I'm sorry, on air. Otherwise, you're off air. So while you're off air, it will by default go to a slideshow. Um, and what we intend to do with that is show World IA Day information, um, sponsor information. So anybody who hits the the uh, stream while you're not there, while you're not encoding, get some information, maybe your agenda. You know, we can we can sort of tailor that as we get close to the event um, to put useful information for anybody who may be logged in. And then once you go live with your encoder, then it'll automatically switch over to your live stream. Um, so that information is in there as well. Um, also, my contact information is there again, as Laura said earlier. Uh, AV at World IA Day, that's me. And you can uh, ask me anything. Um, I try to get back to you as soon as I can um, because I want to make sure everybody has what they need. Well, thank you so much for your time tonight, Chris. We really appreciate it. And it's really helpful to kind of walk through this in a dialogue as opposed to just trying to read it and figure it out. So I really appreciate your time. And just a, a quick note that, um, you know, basically, if you can leverage the location of where you're holding the event and ask the venue what AV equipment they have available, um, that would be ideal and wonderful if they can provide that. So um, if for some reason they can't, then I would definitely encourage you to get a sponsor for the AV equipment. It's really essential that we can capture this and really promote the speakers and help people learn about information architecture all, over, all around the world. Um, we'll also be working with each city to help them with the accessibility features um, within the videos, but that's kind of another topic, so I'm not going to go into that. But um, this hopefully gives you a really good overview of um, the audio visual. Again, um, we've been talking with Chris. Um, you can see him under the people section of World IA Day. You can also contact him um, at the contact information within the toolkit. So thank you so much, Chris, and um, have a great night. Yeah, great. Thanks, Laura. Thanks.